Could we see the Saints using pick 45 and a future second to get back into round one? So, I mean, like, wh where does this get you, like, to, like, 30? You know, I, I don't think that you're getting very high into the first round with two second-round picks. Mm -hmm. But I'm also going to say no, and I don't think that they should do that. And I think it would just be telling the story opposite of what they're doing this offseason. It would yeah. be – it would be trying to make an immediate fix for something that, that doesn't really have an immediate fix. So I think the better process for them is to just kind of play it straight. Make a pick at 14, make a pick at 45, pick again in the fifth round, or at that point you package those, those picks up. But I don't think you should play with any future currency. I don't think you should be overly aggressive in this draft. Now, like if you see an Alvin Kamara and you get him at that spot, that's a little different trade, though because it's always in hindsight though. But like in the moment, it's just I, I don't think they should be doing this. I, look, they probably shouldn't do any of it. But the Kamara deal, and people really missed this at the time. This was a lot like the two first argument with uh, Marcus Davenport. That was a one for one swap. They mm -hmm. traded a future second for a third that they didn't have. They just they drafted Alvin Kamara a year early is how they said it. This question says, should they package next year's second and this year's second? Mm -hmm. That's giving up two picks for one. And, and I just don't think they have the luxury of doing that. They, they, don't, they have too many holes on this roster. They have too much of a need for young talent all across the board to do anything that's two for one. I, I don't want to see them move up in round one. Uh, and use a future first. I don't want to see them round up, move up in round two and use a future second. If they did love, love, love a guy in round three and they use next year's second to draft him, I wouldn't kill them for it. It'd be nice if they could even have the patience not to do that. But it's, it's just the two for one stuff. They've done it too much recently. They were getting away with it when they had a really talented roster. They're not getting away with it anymore. I, I'll be honest. I, I feel a little different. If you trade the two for the three, like it, it has to be Alvin. Otherwise, I feel like right, it's a massive right. mistake because you're moving back around. And I mean, it's just yeah. inherently getting less return on the value. So it's got to hit. But I would hate the theory of it. But like, I'm going to wait and see what the player does. If you're right on the player, nobody remembers what the, the cost was that you got less value. Like, because it's the right decision when it when it hits. But if you miss, it's it's a massive miss. So I just want them to be patient and just yeah. draft with what you got. And if you're going to make a move, play with those fits. Like, I would love to see the trade down. I really – I would applaud it. I don't know if I could do it. We've talked so much <laughs> about how badly they need this offensive line help that I don't think they can sacrifice losing a guy that they have a top ten grade on and settling for a guy that they have a grade on in the uh, lower half of the first round. But – if they can convince themselves to do it, I, I mean, I think it is actually probably what this team needs most. It just, I, I just need to know exactly what kind of grades you have on each individual offensive lineman. But if you have the same grade on like four different offensive tackles, I, I would even love to see them at a pick if possible. <sighs> it's just it's such tough. a it's, it's such tough. a risky move yeah. and then like what if you don't get them yeah. and or if you you just get a way lesser player how, how do you how do you walk in that room and you look at Derek Carr, Alvin Kamara, Kendra Miller, Eric McCoy, everybody Clint else Kubiak on the team. And yeah, Rico and, and, yeah mm -hmm. it's tough it's tough it's tough to look at all those guys and, and say hey like I, I think you just for me it's just make the pick of 14 don't, just yeah. don't do anything else just make the pick of 14 yep. get the best offensive tackle do what you got to do go forward with it still look competitive don't make it look like you're letting anyone down don't make it look like you're conceding but don't be overly aggressive just spend the money in your pocket for once and just do that and just let that be it for me but like if you can trade back and you double dip and you're right great but it's just the theory of it Man, it's just such a whole, like, playing around with that just feels so risky to me that you could end up missing out. Yeah, the other thing that's just so unique is this year feels like you can get a really special player at 14. Like, it, it, it feels like whoever they can get at 14 in offensive tackle will feel like a top 10 guy to me because the quarterbacks and the receivers are going to go so – early that I think you're going to get a special offensive tackle there. And, and, and so in some years, I don't think there's a huge difference between 14 and 20. I think there might be this year. If it's wacky enough, like a By Byron Murphy or whatever his name is, gets in the top 10 and it pushes someone down and like there's enough, sure. But if you're like down to the last two or it's like three and you're moving from like 14 to 25, like Scary. don't do it. Don't Scary. do it.